Good morning, everybody. Happy Friday. We made it. Yes, another week in the books, getting ready for the weekend. Super, super excited to be here. Uh, got a little bit of work to do before we get to our 9 to fiver. But before we do that, let's talk about today's topic. Today's topic is dealing with projection when it comes to clients and not taking you over your competition. We're going to talk about that and so much more. Let's get to work. All right, so we got to render yesterday's vlog real quick and get it ready for uploading. Then we're going to switch gears and work on a little bit of Bev and Bobby's wedding. Trying to get that closed out before the weekend comes so we can enjoy our time with family and friends. So let's get to work. All right, we are on our way to the 9 to fiver. Get this day going and over with. Um, quite a bit to do at work. Um, but, uh, it's doable, it's doable, so, alright, so, dealing with rejection and clients that re reject your business, um, starting out, this is probably one of the quickest lessons that you have to learn, or at least that I've learned, in my experience, it's something that you have to learn very, very quickly, um, and on top of learning how to deal with it, you need to learn how to adapt and learn from those experiences, right? So people don't take your take your bid or don't hire you as a videographer or whatever business you're running. They don't hire you for a reason. There is a reason why they are not hiring you. If you want to capitalize on that rejection, right? Because you, you need to find out why that is, right? You need to handle their objection <clears throat> and try to win them over either by altering what you're offering or clearing up some clearing up some misconception of what they have or maybe they have a specific thing that they're looking for that you need to let you know identify what that is and if you're able to you know uh, cater to that or bring that into your piece or bring that into your final product you need to you know let them know like oh yeah we can definitely incorporate that so if you were just taking the customer at face value and when they say you know you present that your your offer like this is what you're gonna get this is how much you're gonna spend and this is about when you can expect it if they say no and you just let, leave it at that you're missing out on you're missing out a you're missing out on sales B you're missing out on very important information in the follow-up so first off if you handle their objection, so let's let's run through a quick scenario, uh, one that I literally just went through uh, just last night after speaking with one of those brides I was talking about yesterday. Um, come to find out, even though I only charged three hundred dollars as my introductory offer, she they still couldn't afford it, right? So I looked at my budget and I looked at you know my portfolio. I'm like, you know, I really need. I really need to get more pieces in my portfolio. Uh, you know, I'm getting new equipment in. I'd really like to try this equipment out. So what did I do? I offered to do it pro bono. Uh, now I don't don't typically do this, but you know, the, after talking with the bride, it was a very very small wedding, um, and it seemed like they were on a very very thin budget. So I reached out to her and said, you know, don't worry about it. Let's do, let me just pencil in your date, and if I don't get someone else another customer to book that date i will do it for free you'll get a video out of it you'll have a great way to remember your your day i'll get a portfolio piece out of because that's really what i'm trying to do like that's why i'm only charging half off as it is is just to get my name out there get word of mouth going and try to get as many clients as humanly possible that way i can fill up my website fill out a facebook page and when potential clients reach out to me and say, hey, do you have work? I can point to them, you know, to the website. I can say, hey, this is, I just got done working on this. Here's this one. You know, having that library of, of content to give them really goes a long way. Now, at the end of the day, she said she didn't really, uh, she didn't want to do that. She didn't feel that was right. Uh, she appreciated it. And if something changed, she would get in contact with me. So, you know, that's, that's perfectly fine. And do you have to give things away for free? Absolutely not. And I'm not telling you to do that at all. I'm just saying in this circumstance, this issue with this client strictly was price, right? And even 
even at three hundred dollars you know they still couldn't fit it into their budget and that's fine some people don't have that extra money to spend so the way I the way I handled that objection was you know what let me go ahead and give it to you for free because what I'm doing is I'm getting portfolio work out of it so you're I'm helping you you're helping me uh, obviously once you get started and you're you know full bore and stuff like that maybe you can offer like a percentage discount you might also be able to offer like a payment plan um, to where you know right now I offer a payment plan where you pay you know so much down right now to book the day and then one month prior to the wedding you need to have that that balance paid off but what you could do is go one step further and say you know what give you know pay me pay me a deposit today to book the wet to actually book the date and then you can make a payment plan if you need to go past your date right if you need to go like a month or two months or three months past your date I'll just hold the video until after it's paid off that way you get you know you've got someone there recording your video or recording your wedding you you will get it based on when you pay that balance so there's a couple different ways you can work with customers when it comes to price um, you just need to identify which one is right for that customer um, so handling objections is super important that's the first part when you're when you're kind of dealing with and reacting to obje uh, to uh, rejection the second one is even after they even after they object to your service and even after they say you know what I don't I'm not really interested thank you for your time blah 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 find out why they said no right is it your pricing is it your quality is it your coverage is it your style find out what that is and why they decided not to go with you because that's important information as well because it tells you you know first off if it's priced you know if you're getting a lot of those objections where you know every month you know 75 to 80 percent of your objections is price then you might need to look at your pricing structure and kind of reevaluate you know maybe there needs to be another tier in there uh, to offer for lower income customers and maybe there needs to be a middle tier you know look at your pricing structure but if it's your quality maybe you need to look at your gear maybe you need to look at your your education and your um, your execution those are all important things as well so finding out why your customer is saying no even even if it's just to find out for your own personal gain right a you want to find out because that's how you're going to handle their objection but b you want to find out because if there's something that you can fix for your next client to earn their business then it's a win yeah you turn that rejection into a future win rather than a rejection 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 why are people objecting to me then you start asking those questions and by that point you're already you know you how much money have you lost because you didn't alter or evolve your your business structure based on what the feedback was so feedback is very 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 important um, and when you get that feedback make sure you thank them right just because they didn't take your business you know you they provided you with some value right they provided you with feedback that you can take back to the drawing board and fix or evolve or maybe it's just a one-off thing where you're like, you know, my pricing is, is right where it needs to be. I, I apologize, you know, and you can let them know, you know, I'm sorry, you know, we'll, you know, you have to go a different way. If something comes up, you know, give me a call back. I'll be more than happy. I'll, you know, I'll pencil your date in, you know, and I'll reach out in a couple months. And maybe, you know, if something else came up to where you, you know, you got, you came into some money or whatever, or financial things change or whatever, I'll pencil you in. But I'm not going to save your date. Keep that in mind. I'm not going to save your date, but I'll pencil you in and I'll give you a phone call, um, you know, a couple months down the line. So those two things are very, very important when it comes to uh, uh, dealing with rejection. Um, and then obviously, like when you're, you know, when you're taking on work and things like that and you're getting bids and things and kind of just touched on this as well, you know, take a look at your conversion rate. Like if you're, if you are getting, you know, if you're if you're hitting a hundred percent of your bids like your offers are a hundred percent acceptance or you know 95 or 85 percent or higher you might want to look at your pricing structure you might be priced too cheap um, or you might be offering too much you might need to kind of space that out a little bit and that'll help eliminate some of the extra work that you have to do so like for example for videography purposes if you're you know if I'm you know for my lowest package you're gonna get a five to six minute video highlight video from your wedding and your reception and then your middle package is gonna be like an eight to ten minute video of 
you know, highlight video of your wedding reception. And then like the highest package is gonna get, you know, you're gonna get a full feature length video and you know, your whole wedding, uh, wedding ceremony and your whole reception. You know, some people don't want that stuff. They might just, they might just want the five to seven minute video. Whereas some brides like, yes, I want my whole wedding reception. I want my whole ceremony recorded and delivered to me. I will pay that extra money. And that's kind of how you can, you might be able to win more customers. You might be able to make a little bit more money for those that want that extra service. Um, but also win those customers like the one I just spoke about who they're on a tight budget and they just want something to kind of to look at and remember what happened and it doesn't need to be the whole ceremony it could be you know a five minute video a seven minute video or however you want to do your structure but just make sure you've got something for everybody and when you get that feedback from customers maybe you need to add something in between maybe there needs to be a fourth tier or maybe there need or for example or another thing could be if there's a fourth tier maybe you don't advertise it you use that as a kind of like a second request type of thing so like when they say no I, you know I'm on a tight budget and you know the five to seven minute video would be great but I can't afford that maybe there's a fourth tier they say you know what let me do this let me go ahead and get you like a three to four minute teaser trailer that covers your wedding and covers a little bit of the, of the reception you're gonna love it it's priced just for you you know this you know maybe there isn't a price tag on it maybe it's something you just kind of play by ear and that way you can kind of adapt based on what the clients needs are uh, so again those unadvertised packages might be you know kind of a game saver for those those particular clients so all right well we're getting ready to pull into work the nine to fiver so let's go ahead and get this day started uh, I got a lot going on uh, I need to go get go go order some contacts um, don't have let's see it's Friday so no soccer practice I'm gonna try to get in some board games tonight with the family uh, have we played a little bit of uh, dead of winter on Wednesday uh, got our got crushed by the by the NPCs and the zombie horde so maybe we'll play some more uh, play some more board games tonight with the family so all right nine to fiver is over Friday over here we go weekend so I uh, just got a text message from the wife. Looks like we're having some dinner at Buffalo Wild Wings with the in-laws. Kind of excited, excited about all that. Get to hang out with some good people, eat some good food, and hopefully go home and play some board games. So anyway, um, the other thing I, I almost forgot, the other thing I got to do is actually get... Uh, get my pack ready for tomorrow I've got uh, I've got a wedding tomorrow I got to drop the kids off in the morning but I got to get my backpack and my equipment ready tonight so you guys will actually see my current backpack set up and what I take on my shoots and stuff like that for this upcoming wedding so it looks like it's raining pretty good right now um, or at least it did rain so hopefully we get better weather tomorrow for the wedding so let's head to Buffalo Wild Wings and get our wing on
Alright, finished dinner, got home, played some board games with the family, and actually got to crack open a new game called Spookies. Highly, highly recommend it. It's a great game for kids. It's from Germany. Um, it's a risk versus reward type of dice rolling game. Uh, it's great for young kids and um, just just a lot of fun to play with adults and stuff like that. Not too complicated, not too uh, casual, but just a lot of fun to play. Um, so before we wrap, wrap up this uh, vlog, I figured I'd show you guys my kit since we're getting ready uh, to shoot a wedding tomorrow morning. So I figure, why not? While I'm packing up the bag, I'll go ahead and show you what I'm what I pack up uh, the night before. So let's go ahead and take a look. All right, so we've got our main camera here. Uh, we've got the Nikon D3200. Uh, primarily lens, primary lens that I use is the 32, uh, excuse me, the 24 to 120 millimeter. Um, it's got a wide range. I use that pretty much the entire day. Uh, the only time I use something different uh, is this uh, 35 millimeter. Um, I use this on like my glide cam and things like that, uh, just because this one's too, just a little too heavy for it. Uh, but this is a, a great way to kind of catch those uh, uh, smooth shots, the the uh, cannon shots and things like that. So uh, both really good lenses, uh, but this one primarily because of the uh, how new I am to the business. This gives me you know a good range of motion close up and far away. Um, our backup camera here is the Canon Vixia HF800. Um, this will be replaced fairly soon. Uh, we're looking at getting a Panasonic um, DSLR to replace the main camera, and then our uh, this camera will be our backup. Uh, this is primarily just for shooting the actual wedding ceremony itself as a stationary care camera, as a, a safe camera. Um, then we also have two of the Trackstar shotgun mics. One goes on top of each of the cameras uh, to capture an extra set of audio. Um, Speaking of audio, we have a, uh, two lapel mics. Um, we recently upgraded to the Tascam. Um, they got a video coming out about that in a little bit. This one is the here's the Tascam DR10L. Um, it's got a attached mic, which the nice thing about this mic is it's got a locking mechanism so it doesn't have to come unplugged. Uh, this is a powered microphone from Mono. Um, we primarily use that with the Olympus recorder. Um, so we'll use this for like the groom and then this will be for like the officiant. This is the uh, Zoom H1. We use this for capturing like ambient sounds um, and we put this up the, during, at the altar during the ceremony kind of as a backup to the backup. Uh, then we got our light. Um, pretty straightforward LED light. It's got some uh, uh, tone changing and things like that right there. Um, don't use this very often except for at night shots uh, for like styled shots and things like that. Uh, we got batteries for everything, four batteries for the, the Nikon, uh, one main battery for the Canon that usually lasts all day recording, but we do have two backups just in case that one fails. Um, uh, batteries for the light itself, um, charging stations for the Nikon, and then also we have the, uh, a GoPro, which I'm using right now, um, charging station here. Uh, batteries for microphones, anything else that takes double or triple A batteries there. Uh, here's the batteries for the actual, well it's not really GoPro, the knockoff GoPro. Plenty of USB cables, it's a USB mini. Um, and then this is a brand new uh, piece of equipment that we got. It is a uh, power bank uh, with four USB plugs. Um, it had, right now I think we got that set 44%, so we gotta charge that thing back up tonight. Um, so digital readout, uh, get multiple charges off it so we don't have to worry about finding an outlet. Uh, I do have one outlet plug with me um, just in case the battery fails, so we got a backup to that. Uh, the nice thing is the actual charging station is charged two batteries at once, so you know, no worries there. So the only thing left to talk about is the uh, tripods and things. That's all already packed in the car. So we've got one tripod, one monopod, and then the glide cam, um, and then also a stand for our light, just in case we need it. Uh, you never know. Um, we might actually try that out at this wedding uh, during the dancing to kind of light the dance a little bit. We'll see how that goes. Um, so yeah, so that's my kit, um, and that's the end of the vlog, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure you give us a thumbs up, get subscribed if you enjoy the, uh, the vlogs. Uh, we've got more content coming out next week. Uh, we got a little bit of a lull here until the end of the year for the uh, wedding season, so we'll get some more content put up to the site, uh, to the YouTube channel, 
uh, as quickly as possible. So thanks for watching, guys, and have a great morning.